Thank you, Carolyn, and hello, everyone. I will continue with Section G, Countable Controlled Substance Packaging. All Schedule 2 through 5 medications must be received from the pharmacy in tamper-resistant packaging. The package of medication may not have indication of tampering, such as glue, tape, or staples on the package. Scheduled 2 through 5 meds may only have one tablet packaged per blister. The tamper-resistant packaging requirement includes liquid countable meds, which must be packaged so that once used, no liquid remains in the container. These are examples of tamper-resistant syringes. When the cap is unscrewed, the seal is broken and cannot be replaced. If you have this type of syringe in your program, the total number of pre-filled syringes received from the pharmacy are added into the count. Each syringe is subtracted from count as one, rather than subtracting the total number of milliliters in each syringe. Many providers include blister pack monitoring as part of their medication tracking system. Although not required, it's a very effective method used to determine whether or not medications are given as prescribed. If used, staff initial, date, and time the back of the blister package each time a tablet is removed. The packages are then routinely reviewed by the supervisor and or oversight nurse to track that medications are administered as ordered. For some supervisors, it may be daily, especially when there have been issues. Many review the packages at least weekly. On your screen is an example of what blister pack monitoring documentation looks like. Only the back of the package is written on, never the front. If your program uses the Opus Cassette packaging system, there shouldn't be any spare tablets included in the cassette if the med is a Schedule 2 through 5. If the medication is a non-countable, spare tabs are allowed with additional guidelines. If the med is non-countable, there are three options to choose from for managing spare tablets if they're included in the cassette. Option one is to ask the pharmacy not to include them. Option two is prior to returning the cassette, dispose of the spare tabs following the disposal guidelines so that the cassettes are returned empty. Or option three, develop an inventory system of the spare tablets returned. This could be difficult if any of the plastic tabs covering the well of the cassette containing the spares are opaque so that you can't see the tab. In the example on your screen, you're viewing a non-countable medication with spare tabs. All tabs are visible.